Hey everybody, I am really excited to bring you this conversation today. This is a discussion with Brad Fuller, WQ5S, during the field day activities this past June. Now, Brad is going to be walking us through his microwave equipment. And, you know, this is something that I just don't have a lot of experience with, right? This is one of those esoteric topics in ham radio from my perspective. I just don't know a lot of microwave operators. There's not a lot of microwave equipment that you can go out and purchase and get yourself on the air, right? Of course, you know, ICOM has come out with the IC905, but that's fairly new uh, and still not a very common piece of equipment. So this is a very impromptu conversation. Brad had no prep time for this. I just really took advantage of the field day situation. He was making contacts and I asked him if he'd be willing to walk me through his equipment and he was gracious enough to do so. So I wanna thank Brad for that. I also wanna point out that there's gonna be some wind in the video. We're out on a bluff overlooking a great horizon and it's a windy day on this Saturday of field day. It's also a very hot day. I was filming with my phone, again, unplanned, and it was over 100 degrees on that Saturday. After about 12, 13 minutes of filming, my camera cried uncle, turned itself off due to overheating. So you'll see that the video ends a little bit abruptly, but still lots of good information here, and I hope you enjoy. All right, basic and simple. You seen that, we talked about the IF. It's a 144 megahertz IF. Okay. And it's brought in through a little Demi IF switchboard. Okay. That's a controller. It has the attenuators on it to attenuate. Because I only need like zero dBm into this guy. But I'm putting in three to five watts. And so the attenuator So you gotta knock it down. It. Yep. It also handles the, some of the switching between our are you receive and transmit so is that a is that a purchase device because I know, I know you've built a number of the components here as well could you make sure you point out the ones you build and well, we bought, bought that as a kit okay and then you put the parts on it this is the it also handles the sequencing so it, it controls when when it turns on when it turns off and and, and does the transmit and receive and all of that this is a called a digi lo it's another down east microwave part okay and this provides a 96 let me make sure i'm right it's a 96 megahertz i'm sorry 99 megahertz reference oscillator for this for this cap this is a frequency west cavity that provides a, a 12.096 gigahertz to this mixer gotcha okay that mixer then it gets combined comes here to the mixer the IF comes in this side of the mixer and this is a, a harmonic mixer so it mixes up and, and mixes at 12 gigs at the second harmonic so it's at 24098 roughly okay and then that mixes does their little filter and that felt that filter is a is a bandpass filter to filter out the other spurs from that LO Gotcha. So, so the actual carrier that you're using, or the actual uh, frequency that you're using, is a harmonic of the carrier, not the carrier itself. Right. Okay. And so this filter takes the second harmonic, lets it pass through, and from there it goes into this transfer relay, which in turn either switches it to the amplifier. Okay. Or to this. This is a one watt amplifier, one watt ten gig amplifier. Switches it to that or to this LNA. And this is a, like a 2 dB noise figure, 20 dB gain, 24 gigahertz LNA from, from Tundi Electronics. Gotcha. So this is a 10 megahertz reference. Okay. Which provides the reference for this guy. So okay, so that's interesting. Everything yeah. is locked to 10 megahertz. Gotcha, gotcha. The other, this is a power sampler. Okay. It comes up here to this front panel through the diode. See a voltage for RF out, so I know the volt showing on that. I've got to get it out. out. It's feed horn. It's a W1 gigahertz W1 GHZ. 
dual man feed mold. Okay. The back end is 24 gigs and wave guide. Okay. And then the coax connector on the side goes to 10 gigs. Gotcha. And so, and that's focused. Basically, built a little crooked bracket to put it in the focal plane of the dish. Gotcha, gotcha. And what we do to test this is we, we use these converters and then convert down to 28 megahertz and we look at the sun. You point it at the sun, then point at a cold sky. This guy is seeing about between 3 and 4 dB of sun noise, which is excellent So for a small dish like that. The dish at 24 gigs has about 4 dB a game. Gotcha, okay. Wow. The other side over here, we start from the front. Is again the IF, the same IF, same yep. type of IF. 817. All of this stuff over here is inside of this box. It has a 10.224 gigahertz oscillator. Okay. That mixes with 144. It doesn't mix with the harmonic, it mixes with 140. Gotcha. <coughs> that in turn goes out. <coughs> this is a three watt power amplifier. Okay. And you can probably get a better picture from that yep. on the other side. This is a Gas fed LNA. It's made by Al Ward, W5 LUA. The guy here is a 10, my 10 megahertz reference oscillator that keeps me locked to one frequency. And this uses, it has a digital synthesizer inside of it. Okay. It generates that 10.224, and this is its reference lock for it. Now, when you say that that component was built by another ham, mm -hmm. so it sounds like this is kind of a pretty close group of folks who, uh, who do this type of operation. It's a lot. This guy makes a lot of stuff. He designs a lot of stuff. He used to design gas vets and mimics the MMICs, the 50 ohm in now mm -hmm. amplifiers for a Vontech and for uh, before it became Vontech even, he designed those. <laughs> and so gotcha. he knows gotcha. all about how to make them have good gain and good low noise. Low range, noise, so. yeah. And you'll see his name is on that board. Yeah. Yeah. He is probably one of the most most relevant people for getting people on the microwave. He's in. He, he gives these boards. A lot of times, he's giving these boards away. So that's a W five. Is he here in Texas or? Yeah. Okay. He used to be a nine. Okay. But he was. He was. He used to be WB five LUA. Now he's W five LUA. So. Little. Now, do you typically do CW for these contacts, or do you do some... Almost all of ours have been CW. Okay. We have done a few sideband ones when, when we get close. Okay. Rain scatter? Unfortunately, we don't have any rain to play with today, but you heard the raspy signal. Right. When we turn... That's that's humidity that's causing that. Well, rain is even more pronounced. It sounds... I don't know if you've ever heard an aurora signal. I don't know air. that I have. It's a buzz. Okay. It, it'll sound like... And that's that's what you get with rain scatter, but it extends your distances. If you catch a rain rain cell in the right spot, um, Scott, the guy that I just worked over there, AA five AM, with with less than a watt, worked N zero OI in Southern Kansas. Wow! On rain scatter. Wow! So it's all timing and being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So Brad, can you? Uh give your call sign here whiskey quebec 5 sierra wq5s and so brad you're also a uh, a fred fish award winner yes sir you've, you've had an interest in these not as common bands for quite some time i've i'm saving hf for when i retire because <laughs> hf is easy there you go uh, there you go eme doing microwave stuff eme rain scatter meteor scatter all that on the VHF bands, I started doing that back in the, right after I got my license, back in 85, 86. All right, everybody, that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Look, if this is a new topic for you, like it is for me, and you have further questions, leave those questions down in the comments and I'll try to get you an answer. I try to answer every comment left for me on a video. And if this is something that you found entertaining or valuable in some way, consider subscribing. Hit that like button 
let me know that this is content that you guys enjoy. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.